Merry Christmas. Welcome to the episode number 729 of Let There Be Talk. I even work on Christmas Day. I'm dedicated to the Dell Razors. How are you? How are you on this Christmas Day? I am going to dedicate this episode to a longtime supporter, a longtime Dell Razor a fabulous human. This episode is dedicated to Robin Yates. She has been uh, following the show for, I think, since it started. And she is a uh, kick-ass Patreoner and um, and great human. And I uh, just want to give a shout out to her and dedicate the episode to her. And also, thank you to everybody else. That is part of the Patreon. I dropped a bonus episode this week. Hope you guys are tuning into that. And uh, I can't thank you enough. It uh, really helps, believe me. Also, if you want to help the podcast, subscribe to it on YouTube or iTunes and leave a review. Leave a review. It greatly helps. Hold on. Time to hit on a little bit of spin drift here. Mm. Mm, not an ad, just like this shit a lot. Okay, Christmas morning, Gertie is by my side, and it is a beautiful sunny day here in Los Angeles, California. No traffic, just a great day to get out and uh, drive around, you know, go out to the uh, mountains or the beach or whatever. Just This is a day where no one's on the road. This is New Year's Day, the greatest days in LA. Somebody said, I wish it was like this all the time. And I said, yeah, you wouldn't be able to live here because it'd be $5 million for a condominium. The higher it goes up, the uh, the less traffic there might be because it'd just be all million and billionaires. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Anyway, uh, fired up, went and saw Ferrari last night. I usually go to the movies every Christmas day, but this year I decided to go Christmas Eve because I want to watch the 49er game today. I am, uh, I'm back on board fair weather Dean over the last few years. Actually, I'm not really fair weather because I was a 49er fan all my life. Then I, I fucking said, fuck football for years. Too many, uh, shitty penalties roughing the passer roughing the passer every second anyway when i jumped back on board the 49ers were shitty uh burr and i went to a game and saw him play the arizona cardinals a few years ago and i was back in as soon as i saw guys like kittle i was like who's that guy that guy's fucking cool and then purdy came around and i was like Oh, yeah, Debo. Oh, they got all these weapons. I go, I got to watch this historic season just for uh, just for something to do, you know? You know what I'm saying? Anyway, so I'm going to watch that game today and then, uh, and then maybe go to a movie tonight. I want to see Wonka. Everything's a fucking remake or a prequel or a, or a sequel. There's no fucking original shit anymore. There's never going to be able to find the next drugstore cowboy or gummo or fast times at Ridgemont High. Man, when I was a kid, they had indie films and you would go, you would just take a chance and you'd find out a per about a, a director named uh, David Lynch or uh, or fucking uh, Coen Brothers. <laughs> It's crazy the movie world. Uh, Ferrari though saw it last night, and I will say this: Adam Driver, just one of the greatest actors in the last twenty years. It's funny to think, you know, like I, I don't watch TV. I haven't owned a TV. I'm going to finally buy one. I guess I don't know why, but I'm like maybe I'll get a TV and and hang it up and not watch it. <laughs> um. But, you know, years ago, I happened to watch uh, that series, Girls, Judd Apatow. And, uh, you know, everybody is talking about, you're watching Girls, you're watching Girls. And it was kind of the first real uh, 
series where you, you got to see some hipsters in the wild. Hipsters out in the wild. And I fell in love with the show. Mostly it was because of this guy, Adam Driver. He was fantastic. And then they had some weird nerdy girl on there that was great. And then they kind of had a kind of the awkward uh, barista guy. It was just all the uh, hipster characters. Uh, you know, uh, awkward dude, nerdy girl, hip girl, uh, rich girl. They had them all. They had all the hipsters. If they were dolls, you know, which one would you get? Adam Driver. Anyway, this guy would steal the show weekly. This is before streaming, kids. You had to wait till a fucking Sunday. You had to wait a whole seven days for the next episode back in my day. Woo-wee. Seven days. But every Sunday, I'd kind of watch it. And, um, yeah, I fell in love with the, the show. I loved it. And I loved Adam Driver. And here he is becoming one of the greatest actors in the last 20 years. It's to me, it's like him, Leo, Brad Pitt, and um a Joaquin Phoenix, and uh who else? The dude that uh there's one more guy, the guy that fucking he played Batman, I believe. Fuck, can't remember his name. What's his name, Gertie? What are you doing, Gertie? Huh? What are you doing? Anyway. Uh, Adam Driver, man, if you haven't seen that fucking demo, uh, that divorce film from a few years ago with him and Scarlett Johansson, holy shit, that is a clinic of drama acting. It is fantastic. And then, of course, he was great in uh, Gucci and all, all these movies he does. Bat or Not Batman, Star Wars, played fucking Darth Vader. Anyway, uh, Ferrari. I am in on anything with cars, especially Ferrari. The two cars I love the most, Ferrari and Porsche. Uh, I'm not too much of a new Ferrari guy. Where I love new Porsches, I don't love new Ferraris as much as the old school ones. The Magnum PI, the Dino Ferrari, the old school Californias. All those old Ferraris and their logo. It's got to be one of the greatest logos of all time. Just that fucking shield, the yellow shield with a fucking, with a, with a horse. God damn, they nailed it. They nailed it. And Enzo Ferrari is one of the greatest uh, auto, you know, humans on the planet. Looked cool as shit. Hard to find someone looking cooler than Enzo Ferrari. What a fucking name, right? My name is Enzo Ferrari. Enzo Ferrari. <laughs> oh, man. This, this film is great. There was that great press release, I think I talked about, it, or press conference, where they were in, like, Europe, and uh, they're interviewing Adam Driver, and one guy stands up, he's like, let me ask you, uh, I see the movie, it has a lot of crushes. The crushes look a little bit cheesy. What do you say about that? And Adam Driver just looks at him and goes, I say, fuck you. <laughs> I think I said it on a few episodes ago, but you do not get Hollywood outlaws like that anymore. Everybody, uh, you know, it's got to fucking bad play it cool. You don't want to lose anything. But he just straight up said, fuck you. And after seeing the movie last night, I can understand why. The crashes were beautifully done, man. They're, they're fucking real. I mean, it is. This shit is like, whoever that guy is, is just an idiot that said that. Trying to push Adam Driver's buttons, obviously. Because the crashes, the film, Michael Mann, he just shot this thing spectacular. Just beautiful aerial shots of seeing this cross country race in the mountains and town and stuff. The cars look spectacular. Uh, the acting is next level. I highly recommend Ferrari. And, uh, you know, it's a drama and it unravels 
like old school. So don't expect fucking zoom, 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 zoom. I need it. I need it. Map. Move, move, move. I need fucking uh. relax. Let the fucking story unwind. You know, that's it. That's it. I always got to keep telling myself when I'm on stage, fuck these people. They don't need to laugh every second. It's not a goddamn five minute set. It's an hour journey. And let me take you on this ride. Anyway, <laughs> uh, I highly recommend Ferrari. So I want to see Wonka. Uh, and I, I don't want to see Wonka because I think it's going to be fucking great or whatever. But uh, Willy Wonka is, and I often forget to call it one of the greatest films ever, top 10. Willy Wonka, Gene Wilder, absolutely nailing it. And really kind of my first introduction to a musical without even knowing I'm watching a musical. It's amazing. If somebody said, hey, back when I was like nine or something, 10, 11, I forget what age I was. I saw it in the theater, um, you know, uh, and which, by the way, I was talking about it. I was like, well, how did I see the walk in the theater? What year did that come out? Let's look real quick. Because I had looked this up before and I was like, wait, I think it came out in like uh, 68 or something. How could I have seen it in the theater? But then I read that they uh, had re-released it. I could be talking out of my fucking ass. Willie Wonka. Let's see here. That stupid fucking... This is, I hate this fucking thing. IMDB, uh, Willy Wonka. Let's see here. I can't, here it is. Oh, there's a C TV series. I don't know, man. Fucking, now I'm slowing down the, the podcast. I'm letting the podcast uh, unravel here. Wonka, here it is, 71. So yeah. I was like, no way did I see it in 71. I would have been fucking like five, but they re-released it in the 70s and it came to the theater where I was living and I went and they even had the fucking Wonka bars in the movie theater uh, snack bar. And I was like, oh my God, I wonder if there's any golden tickets in there. He's got a golden ticket. I've got a golden Charlie. Charlie, I got you a Wonka bar. <laughs> Love that, man. I think you know what? I was talking to Bill about that. I thought that that was the dude from um, Chico and the Man. Hold on, let me look. And it fucking wasn't. It kind of seemed like the same guy, Wonka. God, I'm sucking on this podcast today. Here it is. Gene Wilder. What was Grandpa's name? Jack Albertson. Okay. Jack Albertson was grandpa. Remember how he didn't fucking, he couldn't get out of bed at all, but then he got a golden ticket and then fucking, you know, he's jumping around out of bed. He can move. We thought he was all paralyzed. Our first introduction to like a paralyzed human. <laughs> grandpa Joe. Now let's see here. Now, his name, um, I said, I just said it was um, uh, Jack Albertson. And uh, wait a minute, Jack Albertson. And I, man, this fucking guy is the Chico in the man. Bill was wrong. Bill's like, nah, it's a different guy. Nah, that's fucking the same dude. All right. Anyway, uh, it's fucking funny to look at this, uh, Wonka. Anyway, so I want to see Wonka um, just because it's a prequel. And, uh, I, you know, I guess it's how he starts the, the Choco Factory. I'm not really a fan of that Chalamet kid. Uh, I mean, I don't, I, don't, I don't really know much about him. I think he might have been in something I've seen, but I don't know. But I want to go see it. And then I want to see Godzilla. There's a new Godzilla out, which I had no idea. But Del James hit me up. Uh, and I talked about it before. 
where he said, you got to see, you got to see that. <laughs> and I told you he was the same guy that recommended this rib place. It absolutely sucked. Anyway, so there's a new Planet of the Apes coming out. I saw 42 fucking minutes of previews at the fucking movies last night. I go to the movies, nine o'clock, right? It started at 942. Fuck you, AMC, you fucking idiots. Who wants to be in there another 42 minutes? This is insane. What are you fucking doing? 42 minutes. Mm. Uh, I couldn't fucking believe it, actually. 42 minutes of preview. A bunch of bullshit, too. And then it gets down to the end there. And you're ready to go. And here comes another three minutes of uh, that Tom Cruise's ex-wife. She's like, oh, movie theaters. Oh, the way it should be seen. Yeah, fuck, we know. We're in here. Show us the fucking movie. That's why we're here. You don't have to remind us that the movie theater is a great experience because right now it's not a great experience with 42 fucking minutes of previews and then you coming on. Oh, yes. Silence your phones and don't talk. Don't text. Shut the fuck up. Put the movie on. Unbelievable. 42 minutes. Unacceptable. So for now on, I'm just going to show up 30 minutes late. And then, uh, you know, I go to the movies at the Universal Studios. Great fucking theater. No one ever in there. No one. Because it's in the middle of the Universal lot on City Walk. And it's just tourists. The tourists aren't going to a movie while they're visiting L.A. They're going to ride the fucking tram to see Jaws and fucking Psycho House and shit from the 70s. <laughs> hilarious anyway 42 minutes so yeah i want to see wonka just to uh see what the prequels like and then um planet of the apes uh i saw a preview there's a new fucking planet of the apes and i was like man everything's a remake it looked pretty good though you know like the apes and everything i don't know the the you know, I like the old school where you had to go in as an actor and earn your money. You had to sit in a chair for eight hours. You get there at 4.30 a.m. You're all hung over from the night before. Maybe a cocaine party in the Hollywood Hills. And then you got to go in and get your goddamn Cornelius head put on. Just sitting there as they just start fucking doing makeup, prosthetics, sticking this shit to your head. They got two straws coming out of your nose so you can fucking breathe while they turn you into Cornelius. <laughs> oh my God, what fucking torture. These actors these days got it made with the CGI and, and they're complaining about AI. Just give them an AI fucking ape. Anyway, the shit looks pretty fucking good. But I, I don't know. Come on, Planet of the Apes. They had that one with Wahlberg. Remember that? Wahlberg, Planet of the Apes. Which, by the way, Wahlberg is... Uh, and this will be a clean segue into my next section of the podcast. Celebrating Christmas wish lists back when you are a kid. Wahlberg, I guess, got the rights to the $6 million man, which was uh, Lee Majors hit TV show in the 70s. Lee Majors had two fucking hits. He had The Fall Guy, which he played a stuntman in Hollywood Stuntman. And, uh, and then he had Bionic Man, which was first. And uh, it was the $6 million man. But now with inflation, Wahlberg's having the uh, $6 billion man. You know? <laughs> I guess he's got some good fucking health care. He doesn't got that uh, that Amazon Prime healthcare I just saw. They got a healthcare with Amazon now, which is fucking crazy. If you got Amazon Prime, you can get healthcare for nine bucks a month. Now, this is the first thing I've heard 
in a long time where a corporation is doing something good. Now, I haven't looked into it, so it could be some kind of shit. But from what I saw, it was $9 for health care on Amazon Prime. So uh, you're not going to be able to get the $6 billion man surgery with that, I'm sure. But hey, nine fucking bucks. Anyway, so Mark Wahlberg has bought the rights, has been going around for years, and they're going to try to finally make it. And uh, there's nothing cooler than old school $6 million, man. It's so cheesy and great at the same time. And then you had um, you had this uh, bionic woman also, which was his uh, Lee Majors woman. His chick had to be bionic, you know. You can't be a bionic man and just date like a normal chick. You know, that's like trying to uh, be a superstar actor and then date a a, a normie, someone not in the business. (laughs) Once in a while you see it, a guy just dating someone he met, like when he was doing autograph signings in Oklahoma. Yeah, this is Kathy. Met her at the mall. I know I make like a hundred million a year and I'm a superstar, but I married a normal woman, not a psychopath. (laughs) Anyway, Lee Majors had his lady. She had some bionics. Lee Majors had the bionic eye. Whenever he was like, it needed to see far. He just like, this sound would come out and that mean his eye was seeing far. (laughs) And then if he needed to run, he could run faster than a cheetah. Cheetah's the fastest uh, animal on planet, but Colonel Steve Austin and his, uh, uh, what was Oscar, uh, Oscar Goldman was his his, uh, boss. Anyway, he he would start to run and go ching, 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 when he's jumping over fences, ching, 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 and then this music would come on. Ching, <laughs> ching. I'm fucking nutty today. Go listen to it on iTunes. Do do. Man, and they had their jump the shark moment uh, where he fought um, the abominable snowman and Bigfoot. (laughs) I love the 70s. The 70s had the best wacky TV. It was fucking nuts. Mork for Mork, Bionic Man, Um, Happy Days. Laverne and Shirley, weird ass shows. Anyway, uh, that brings me to my Santa wish list. When I was a kid, you know, you make the Santa list, you give it to your mom who would somehow get it to Santa or you'd go to the mall. Here's Santa. I wonder what Santa did with that. Like the mall Santa, just fucking thousands of notes. I want a Barbie. Just gets off work back there smoking a Colombian joint with seeds, throwing them in the garbage can. But uh, the top gifts I wanted every year, and I got one one time, I got the uh, Bionic Man, and it it had the Bionic Eye. You'd put the action figure, don't call it a fucking doll. It's an action figure. I call them dolls. And you put your uh, eye up to the back of his head, and it had a magnifying glass and you could see through. And then it had bionic arm. You'd roll up this rubber skin and you could put a bionic plastic, like kind of Lego looking thing, snap it in there. And uh, and then it had a thing in the back. You, you press it and you put a 500 pound uh, plastic toy and it would like curl it. <laughs> you get this fucking thing and then you're just in the room, you know, uh, yeah. Oscar Goldman. They had the Oscar Goldman. They had Bionic Woman. They had the, they had Bigfoot. They had the whole. Oh, and they had a um, fucking mystery face. Whatever. I'm just talking crazy shit. You're like, what the fuck are you talking about, old man from the '70s? 
but the toys back then, you know, so the next was the course, the greatest toy of all time, of all time, nothing beats this toy. And uh, to prove it, this, they've reissued it and they're still selling it now. The Evil Knievel Stunt Cycle. When this came out, every fucking kid in America, their heads popped off. And go to YouTube and watch the original Evil Knievel Stunt Cycle commercials. And Evil Knievel Instagram is selling them now. And every day they put up some kind of new fucking amazing jump that must take hours and hours and hours to get right. Because basically it was a plastic kind of wind up thing. Sometimes you'd be winding up fucking as hard as you can and your hand would slip off the winder and your knuckles would just scrape on the fucking black top. You'd just be like, oh, uh, just knuckle skin gone. Nothing worse than knuckle skin gone. <laughs> That's a good band name, knuckle skin. Hey man, knuckle skin's playing with you too tonight. <laughs> anyway, uh, mm. you wind it up and then you would stop and the thing would shoot off and do evil Knievel killer doll. I got, I got three of them still right now in my minimalist days. I still can't get rid of the evil Knievel dolls helmet, perfect fucking white jumpsuit with the stars down the arms and legs. And the bike was cool. It looked like a Harley. It would wheelie. He could make it jump. And me, who likes everything mint and clean, it was tough for me to wind it up and let it go because it would go down the street and then just crash and be all dirty and scuffed up. I'm no scuffed Dean. Remember from the old uh, Dark Fonzie days? No scuffed Dean. Helmet would be scuffed. I'd be like, oh, my toy. You know? Because you only got like, we are poor. You get like one toy a year. You know? One or two. Maybe you get the evil Knievel and you get a couple fucking stocking stuffers hanging from the fireplace. Shit in there. There was always that candy cane box my mom would get me. You'd open it up and it'd be the rolls of candy canes in there. The candy cane box. Some D batteries that you need for whatever fucking toy you got in the, in the stocking. A yo-yo. And... Uh, and then some treats for your dog for some reason. We're in the stocking next to you, Gertie's stocking. Right, Gertie? <laughs> Which, by the way, I got to tell you, man, it, uh, it has been a, a rough day today. It's the first Christmas without my mom. And this, this is, uh, you know, it's tough. And uh, I want to thank all of you guys for always being there and, uh, throwing me some support. I love you guys. I miss my mom every day, especially right now, just talking about the stockings, you know? Your mom, a.k.a. Santa, when you're a single parent, goes all out to do whatever they can do. My mom was way into the flocked Christmas tree. She never got the green one. We'd go down and she'd pay a little extra. We didn't have any money. But she'd pay a little extra and have that guy shoot some flock on the Christmas tree so it looked like it was snowed on. God, I love you, Mom. I miss you big time. Anyway, she'd have the Christmas presents all ready. You know, one year I fucking found him by accident under her bed. You know, I dropped something or something happened. And I looked under the bed and there was like my Christmas gifts. And then I knew Santa didn't exist anymore. That's a weird part in your adulthood, not adulthood, your childhood. And uh, where you're like, oh, wow. Like I saw the gifts and then I just didn't know what to think. And then I just didn't say anything to my mom because I did. I think she wanted to carry on the uh, Santa the Santa mystery over the next few years. I just kind of play it off. When's Santa coming, mom? I'm like 13. <laughs> 13, just listening to ACDC. Hope Santa brings me a car. <laughs> anyway, 
And I miss you, Bob. Evil Knievel. My mom got me the Evil Knievel one year. She got me the Bionic Man one year. Um, the one thing I never got, she got me the, oh, this was the major uh, malfunction. I talked about it before, but I was uh, wanted the G.I. Joe with Kung Fu grip. One year they had this rubber hand on G.I. Joe. You, you pull it apart. It was Kung Fu grip. <laughs> the toys back in the day, man. There had to be guys just smoking weed. Like, what if we give them like a rubber hand and called it Kung Fu grip? Yeah, fuck yeah, that might work. <laughs> they just, your G.I. Joe comes with just a fist and you open it up, Kung Fu grip. And the way they filmed those commercials, now G.I. Joe with Kung Fu grip. And then be kids, don't mess with me. I got Kung Fu grip. And they would perfectly, they must have shot these commercials for months on end. All of the toys, you know, it'd be throwing like a G.I. Joe and it'd be in a tree. <laughs> but um, I never got the G.I. Joe. My mom fucked up one year and got me the um, Big Jim, which was uh, like a, a bad spinoff of G.I. Joe. I used to say it was Ken. It was a Ken doll. And then one day I stumbled across this thing, Big Jim on eBay. And I go, no, that's fucking what it was. It was this weird Big Jim. Uh, the other companies, like, you know, their their battle against G.I. Joe to try to, it just was wrong. My cousins had the G.I. Joes and they were cool. They had those fucking beards look like this. They had a redhead one. They had the Bill Burr, G.I. Joe, with the red beard. They had one guy with the black beard. They had a blonde beard. And then they had the just mini hair. It was like, it was funny to be like, G.I. Joe with real hair. <laughs> Where the fuck did they get that hair? Anyway, she got me a big gym. It was like, uh, and then you got to just act, uh, you know, happy like to your mom. When you're young, man, you just... I don't know. I wasn't fucking evil. I didn't want to, I didn't want to uh, disappoint my mom. I'd be like, oh, cool. A big gym. And then your neighbor friends are like, what'd you get? You're like, oh, I got a G.I. Joe. They're like, well, let's see it. Oh, it's at home. <laughs> you don't want to show them big gym. You get fucking clowned for a big gym. Oh my God. It looked like he did gay porn, big gym. Just fucking all in shape. Weird Levi jacket on. <laughs> um, so, and then the other thing that was always the dream was uh, an AFX slot car track. And myself, since I've been young, I always like the best shit, you know, because they had AFX and then they had the, the cheaper version, Tyco. But AFX had these cars called the G Plus. That was the uh, slot track. You got a little controller. It has a thing. Zzz, zzz, zzz. It goes around the fucking slot track. And I had the yellow Porsche Carrera. And these cars fucking cooked. And then they would fall off the track all the time. And then one year, AFX came out with new Magna Grip. The cars would be magnetic on the track, so you could just fucking cook. Zzz, zzz, you and your buddy racing. I mean, you would fucking sit in your room for hours. You put the track together, had guardrails, fake trees, fake fans, and, zzz, and you just, oh, AFX, man. Fuck Tyco. That shit was junk. And then later, they had these cars called Sizzlers. Not the fucking steakhouse, but a car that was like, you, it was a little car, looked like a, a Hot Wheel, and you would stick this gas pump in it, and it would charge up electric. A, a little car, and just the sizzlers. I, I mean, I'd like, to, I'd like to see that on eBay. That just hit me. Anyway, that's my Christmas... Uh, dream list for years and then of course always a bike or a skateboard but the toys and and then later you know my mom got me the kiss 
rock and roll over record for Christmas and a record player, my own fucking shitty little record player, those ones that are in the box, you know? And oh my God, I had that and the Don McLean Bye Bye Miss American Pie 45 and the Partridge Family record, I Think I Love You. Those were the three records in my room. And a kiss rock and roll over came with that fucking sticker. I stuck it on my bedroom window. All, all shitty. When you're a kid, you don't know how to put a sticker on without the bubbles. It was all bubbled and fucking, I put it on wrong. You don't know how to just like smooth it out as you're putting the sticker on. You know, you didn't have like a cool squeegee or something just to get the sticker on with no bubbles. Oh, I hate when you put a sticker on. It's got bubbles underneath the air bubbles. Terrible. Terrible player. Terrible. Anyway, Merry Christmas to all of you. I absolutely love you guys. And uh, hearing my loony Christmas stories. A uh, couple more stories. Oh, I'm going to get Chinese food today. I can't wait. Chinese food. I do it every Christmas usually. Try to get a little Chinese food over at this place that Joe, Uncle Joey turned me on to years ago called Green Apple in Studio City. It is great. Go down and get some uh, green beans and prawns, some general Szechuan chicken or whatever it's called. General chicken, general Cho's chicken. <laughs> hot stickers with the hot mustard. Fuck yeah. And, uh, and then watch that 49er game. Uh, one last thing over the uh, last couple of days, I went to uh, uh, see Billy Gibbons at the Troubadour. He does this Christmas party every year, three years. And Mike Flanagan, the amazing B3 player who uh, was on the podcast a few years ago, who plays with Billy quite a bit, uh, called me up, invited me down. And I spent the evening at the Troubadour with Billy Gibbons and this guy, it just couldn't have been nicer, man. Gave gave me and uh, Billy Rowe from uh, Buck Cherry and Rock and Roll Relics and Jet Boy fame. He gave us a, just a solid 30 minutes, just him and Billy and I, just in-depth, engaged, cool conversations on guitars and comedy and rock and roll, man. And, I just realized that fucking Billy Gibbons could be the nicest. Him and Mike Inez, if they were in a band together, Mike Inez from Alice in Chains, which, by the way, there's only about 170 tickets left for the Bon Scott tribute on January 9th. Mike Inez, looks like Juliet Lewis is coming back again. Kick ass. Um, Lure from Primus. Dave Lombardo from Slayer, uh, Scott Ian, Billy Rowe, Steve Gorman, Josh Z, myself singing. Um, who else on drums? Josh Freeze from the Foo Fighters and every band ever. <laughs> We've got a crushing poster done by Kai Ahrens and we are going to be giving, I am going to be giving away a Gibson Epiphone SG at the concert. And I'm going to do it in a very cool way. I'm going to stick a special something under one of the seats in the general admission. And when Bill and I finish with the comedy, remember Bill Burr is playing drums and doing fucking comedy. Just the ticket price alone is worth Bill Burr doing comedy. And then you get this super Bon Scott tribute. But uh, when Bill and I finish the comedy portion of the show, we are going to ask somebody to uh, look under their seat. And if they have the magic fucking whatever it's going to be, uh, they will win this Gibson Epiphone SG. What a fucking cool Cool thing. Thank you, Gibson Guitars, for uh, doing this with us. Also, we will have some uh, special uh, other things going on there that I can't mention right now. But get your tickets, deandelray.com. Bond Scott Tribute, January 9th in Hollywood. 
fly out for this. I highly recommend it. There are going to be some surprise guests. So anyway, Billy Gibbons uh, does this thing at the Troubadour every year. Three nights, Billy Gibbons and friends. And Joe Bonamassa was there. Joe Bonamassa fucking played the shit out of this original 58 Les Paul. And Joe's going to come back on the podcast and talk about that guitar. It just blew my mind. I'll post a photo of it today. But uh, Billy, man, just a fucking great human. Now, yes, I did ask him to do the podcast. He said he would do it. But, you know, he could just be kind. But he's saying, oh, yeah, I got you. No problem, my friend. You Here's how he told me to call him. Billy is, there's no one like Billy. Billy pays for everything in $2 bills. Billy uh, uses like a peso for a guitar pick. Billy has his own lingo. So he said, give him a call. But this is how he said, he goes, hey, man, uh, why don't you send me a smoke signal tomorrow and uh, we'll get together. <laughs> He's got this card. It says, uh, Billy Gibbons, friend of Eric Clapton. And, and he hands you this card. Oh, by the way, I wanted to, I fucking just got this. Let's see if you can see this. It's this uh, Bluetooth Marshall speaker. It's about the size of like a fucking uh, one of those big candy bars. And I'll tell you what, uh, 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 it's disappearing. There it is right there. It is cool. I got the cream version, Randy Rhodes. And uh, let's see if, uh, let me get it to, Let's see if you can hear it just real quick, like a fucking duck. Oh, Gertie, every time I turn it on, Gertie barks. <laughs> she didn't do it that time. Okay. Uh, this thing is like 110 bucks at Blue uh, uh, Best Buy right now, and it just sounds so good. Let's see here. Uh, here we go. Let's see if we can hear it. Okay. Here we go. My family is a place that I got shaking in my head. I feel like a giant. We shall be dead. If I didn't, pretty good. Pretty fucking good. I like it. Anyway. I recommend this thing, man. Fucking, it's like 119 bucks. Stays charged for like 17 hours or something. That was the Mother Hips, by the way, who just uh, celebrated their 30 year anniversary of doing the Christmas shows at the Great American Music Hall. And unfortunately, I never get to see them because I'm always working. But I think they're coming down to LA soon and I've got to see them. I just, I fucking love this band. And I dove deep into their uh, records again a couple nights ago and was just, just so many memories were flying through my fucking head. Um, anyway, Billy Gibbons absolutely destroyed it. The guy plays, I mean, there's no one like Billy. As soon as he picks it, you know, they played fucking Jesus just left Chicago. Uh, you know, uh, they got a, uh, what else did they play? Oh, they, they played uh, Sharp Dressed Man. Just great. You know, just killing it. The whole audience at the Troubadour Festive. Everybody. Christmas time. Christmas to New Year's is just a, a beautiful time of the year, man. So anyway, thank you, Billy and Mike Flanagan for uh, the incredible hospitality. And uh, once again, thank you all for tuning into this podcast every week. And I hope you have a great uh, holiday. Whatever the fuck you celebrate, man, go out and celebrate it. Tell people, this is what I celebrate. <laughs> and uh, I, I will uh, talk to you soon on the patreon.com slash Dean Del Rey. Last minute here, some shows coming up. This is very important. I really am fired up that I'm doing Acme in Minneapolis. Please get your tickets to see me there. I want to try to pack the house there. It's an honor to do this club. Uh, DeanDelRay.com for tickets. Also, 
I will be, uh, what is it, January 22nd through the 28th at the Comedy Cellar in Las Vegas at the Rio Hotel. I'll be doing the Comedy Fort in March in Fort Collins, Colorado. I'm also, uh, uh, what else? Uh, I got some other shows. I don't know. But the, the really important ones are the Bon Scott and the Comedy Cellar and Comedy Fort because these are all coming up pretty quick. And the Acme at Minneapolis. Acme is just, it's stunning. I got a bunch of new material I'm working on. I hope you can make it out. I hope you have a great day. Go Niners. Candles are lit. I love you guys. See ya.